Hi there everyone, welcome back to the Royal Society. We're here at the Card Catalogue with Head Librarian Keith Moore. And because it's that time of year, festive, it's Christmas, we've decided as a little present for James, who does all the camera work and editing here on Objectivity, he is going to wear the White Glove of Destiny and take a random pick from the Card Catalogue. Let me get camera so I can show everyone you. Because you have to close your eyes, James and make a random draw of a card, and whatever you pull from the catalogue, we're going to go downstairs and have a look at. All right, you go then. Cool. The eyes are closed. Who is going over the far side here? Something visual, James. Oh, what's I don't doing? want to take it too far. OK, there you go. That's fine. You're fine. Cool. And now choose your card. I'm going to go here. OK, we have reports by Stuart and Foster on their paper on the influence of pressure on the temperature of the volatilization of solids. It's a referee's report and... Um, oh no, it's a referee's yeah, report. I, I'm not feeling this, James, to oh. be honest. That's okay, James, because as everyone knows, we do two picks from the catalogue normally. You get a provisional, like a second golf shot in case your first ball goes in the water. So you can do a second pull from the catalogue and we'll have a look at that one as well. All right, where are you going to go next? Um. Go down here. Oh, it's gone low. It's yeah. gone low. Ooh, yeah. it's gone low. All yeah. right. Okay. Yeah. All right. right. I'm going to stay near the front this time. Okay. I'm going to go here. This is promise. Oh, this is. This. Oh, oh, oh. oh this is a, probably the best score on objectivity. <laughs> Jackpot. Ever. Jackpot. It is. Drawing of six branched figure formed on the surface of urine by freezing. This oh. is an original illustration that went into micrographia. This is this. Whoa. Oh, I, this I, wasn't a setup. This was no, we this saw it. We saw it. All right. I'm chuffed with that. Well done. Don't forget, people, that was his first pick. Yeah. That was it. That's his actual one. So Keith's going to fill out the uh, coal slips, the, which we do for all official documents to be taken from the Royal Society archive. He's happy. He's very smug. Very, <laughs> very smug. Keith forgot the keys. Right, let's get that referee's report. All right, so here we are, down where the magic happens. This was James's first pull. This is a referee's report. So this isn't like an actual scientific report. This is people commenting on a scientific report. Ah, that's right, yes. So yeah. this is a paper being sent into the Royal Society for publication and uh, the referees come back with their reports. Is it a good thing? Is it, is it a bad paper? And people who have seen these White Gloves of Destiny videos will know these are notoriously a little bit boring. And while we're here, we'll grab the second. This is the one that we're a bit excited about. It's always a good sign when we're pulling things from this part of the archive. This is where all the good stuff is. Let's go and have a look. All right then, shall, oh, we, yeah. shall we start with Let's the referee? Let's take a look, yeah. So this is referee's reports, volume nine. But the one you want is 180 to 181. Oh, it's a big one. Yeah. Not a printed form, longhand. This is sent from Manchester, 12th of July, 1883, to George Gabriel Stokes, describing the experiments by Messrs. Ramsey and Young. I think the experiments by Messrs. Ramsey and Young, Keith, you're going to have to take over here, bear the marks of being carefully made and that they throw much light on the behaviour of solid bodies. I think, however, that the paper requires some recasting. And when this is done, I should feel disposed to recommend that it be published in the transactions. There appears to me to be a considerable vagueness of expression with regard to the objects of their research. It just needs a bit of work to, to get it into shape, but he's recommending this for the philosophical transactions. But we've got a good two pages here of, you know. Yeah. So the author of this one is, is Balfour Stewart. Very good fellow of the Royal Society. Yeah. So this is, this is good mathematical physics going on here, I think. Let's be honest, without any pictures and without knowing much about the experiments, for an objectivity video, it's pretty dry. It's important. Yeah, yeah it's important. Yeah. Science is important. Refereeing is important. And we love it all, don't we, yeah, Keith? we do. But we do. for a video... We've had worse. We, we have had worse. Yeah. <laughs> we have had worse. So but this is 180 to 181, so you've got another referee's report oh. there on that card. Oh, there's two. So there's oh. a second one. Oh, here we go. Here's the second referee. 
This time we have one and a half pages. So this is George Carey Foster. Very good. 24th of August, 1883. What does he say? Is he recommending? I am not of the opinion that it is desirable to publish it in the Philosophical Transactions. Oh, Ooh. it's a no. Yeah, so it's one, a no. one yes, one no. Always oh, one yes if you redo it and one no. Yeah. The experiments recorded seem to have been carefully made and the general results are valuable as affording an additional refutation of the views put forward a few years ago by Mr. Carnelli on the behaviour of easily fusible and vaporizable solids when exposed to radiant heat in highly exhausted vessels. I guess the question everyone has, and I have, and it's going to be hard to answer right now here in the bowels of the Royal Society mm. with no internet, is was it did, published? Did it get published? Yeah, we can find that out. All right. So right now on the screen, we've got a yes or a no, and whichever one we now highlight is the answer as to whether it was published or not. This is getting like game show, I like it. Mm. Yes or no, it's a... <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> really is Christmas, isn't it? Yeah, there we go, we're being a bit zany. All right, enough of this boringness. We want James's second pull from the James the second pull, right. So this is classified papers 20. Oh, wow, this book's so good, it's even got its own box. Indeed. And these are the surviving papers of Robert Hooke, classified papers 20. Robert Hooke. We're talking big, big names now. So these are research papers of all kinds by Robert Hooke. But the one we want is number six in this series. And here it is. Look at that. Now, of course, what Robert Hooke's famous for is the book Micrographia, published in 1665. And it's his record of observations made through the microscope. So I feel there's a bit of a lens thing going on here between James and, and, and yeah. Robert Hooke. Yeah. And here we have one of the few surviving illustrations which is connected with micrographia. We'd like it to be the famous ones, you know, like the flea or the eyes of a fly or something like that. Mm. It's frozen urine. But, I mean, I've seen this before. Believe it or not, this really is one of the real treasures of the Royal Society collection, isn't it? Yeah. So he would have been looking at it and hand drawing that while he looked. Mm. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. We'll put on the screen what the printed version looks like. Yeah. There you go. I mean, this is his hair. It's a rather beautiful thing, isn't it? And rather snowflakey, rather kind of Christmassy, maybe. Yeah, fractals. It is a bit Christmassy. Yeah. And James pulled it from the catalogue by chance. It is a Christmas miracle. And of course, Hook doesn't just illustrate them. He's observing the structure of the urine, but the text continues down to item 15. He decides that he's going to be tasting several clear pieces of this ice. I could not find any urinous taste in them, but those few I tasted seemed as insipid as water. So he's almost disappointed his frozen wee doesn't taste like wee. Yeah, so he, he has invented the, the urine lollipop, if you like. Science. 